Welcome or welcome back to the Adorable Knits Knitting Podcast. My name is Dorothy. I'm the face and designer behind Adorable Knits. I live in Antwerp, Belgium, with my wonderful husband and our two little girls, Renée and Gabriella, and our two cats. In this podcast, I will talk about my designs, both old and new, about future ideas, about uh, projects that are currently on my needles, about finished projects, about uh, pattern releases, um, call for test knitters or test knits, anything knitting related really. So if you don't want to miss out on anything, you're very welcome to subscribe to my channel. This is the seventh episode already and yet again it has been a long time uh, since my last episode. So um, yeah, we have been struggling uh, with a couple of nasty viruses here at home. Um, it felt like we were going around in circles. It has been going on for weeks really, almost two months I think. Um, my eldest daughter Renée had a um, she she actually stayed home for three weeks from school because she was so sick um, and turned out she had a pneumonia which are which I later got too so yeah we had the best weeks <laughs> to be honest um, so if I sound a bit weird you know why because I'm still struggling but that's okay um, so yeah making a YouTube video wasn't very high on the priority list and just wasn't possible to be honest because I was coughing so much and couldn't talk um, well so that wouldn't been that wouldn't have been very nice to <laughs> to listen to or to watch um, <clears throat> yeah so let's talk knitting and yarn this episode is quite heavy on the acquisition part, to be honest, um, because I wasn't able to knit for like six days when I was sick. It was that serious, six days of no knitting. Um, I did a lot of online window shopping, which then wasn't just window shopping, but actual shopping. So I'm happy, but my bank account isn't, but that's okay. Um, so I will get that back to that later. And then you've probably seen, I went to um, HH, by the way, sorry for the, for the light. Um, the sun is shining now and then. So sometimes it will be, phew, but yeah, that's okay. Um, <clears throat> so, HH in Cologne, um, I went for two days, it was last weekend, and I had such a great time, it was really, really nice. Um, I completely forgot to <laughs> make any videos to share here, but um, I did share a lot, um, a lot of it in my stories on Instagram, so I'll probably make a highlight there. Um, in which I'll share everything. So if you're interested, you can check it out there. Um, yeah, and see what I what I did and who I visited. So um, I visited all the yarn brands that I work um, with. One of them is Selected Yarns, and um, if you, I don't know if you know it, Selected Yarns is. Um, a company that actually owns different yarn brands such as BC Garen, Kremke, um, <clears throat> which I used for my Mila sweater by the way. Um, and they I also saw a new one, I think it's called what's it called? Hey Mama Wolf, love the name by the way, um, which looks very interesting to me, so I'll have to check it out. Um, <clears throat> And my contact person there is Emma from Emma's Knits on Instagram. Uh, and she's such such a nice and a lovely person. It was absolutely uh, fantastic to meet her um, in person because we have talked online, of course. Um, but it's always so nice to finally, you know, put the face on the <laughs> Instagram 
profile. Yeah, it's very, very nice. Um, and she's a network designer too, by the way, so check her out. She's very, she's very talented, uh, makes beautiful things. Um, so yeah. Ah, and Selected Yarns, they are also distributor for um, other brands like Manos del Uruguay, which I will talk about later because I've used some of their gorgeous new yarn. Um, and it's a lovely story behind um, that yarn brand, so you should check it out. I'll link it below. And then, what did I do? I was invited to um, a yarn tasting event organized by uh, Line Yarns, which is one of the yarn brands that I work um, with, as you know. Um, and it was, it was really great, actually. So I've spent the evening um, talking and laughing and, and um, yeah, just having a great time with uh, Sophie from The Knit Pearl Girl and um, Miriam from Mrs. Funny Valentine, who I didn't know before and then was very happy to have met at the event. Um, and they are both such wonderful and talented and inspiring women. So we had the best time at the event. It was really, really nice. And then uh, we got to try out some of the new yarns from Lang Yarns because it was a yarn tasting. Um, so they put like the big balls of, um, yeah, new qualities with knitting needles. And then we had a drink together. Um, and then we had dinner there. Yeah, it was fantastic. And then we met all the people um, from Lang Yarns uh, for the different, um, you know, because you have Lang Yarns and then you have um, Lang Yarns for Belgium and Holland and um, for the Nordic countries. So the whole team was there and it was, yeah, it was great to meet them in person. And who did I meet to? Oh, I've met... Um, Lucy from um, Atelier Ajour, uh, who I've been following for many years now, really, but um, I never got a chance to meet her in um, in person. So um, yeah, I saw or she saw that I was there, and we we reached out and um, we had a coffee together. So it was very nice. If you don't know Lucy, Lucy makes the most beautiful. Um, delicate designs um, using a lot of silk mohair and it's like very detailed and super super beautiful she has a very unique style um, so yeah it was nice and it's also so interesting to see um, how we are all struggling with the same things in this job you know um, it was so nice to to be able to rant a bit or um, to share our um, frustrations or doubts and also our love for this job. So, um, sorry if I'm a bit out of breath, it's because <laughs> it's still the effects from the, from the pneumonia. So I'm doing my best here. Um, the thing is, being a knitwear designer can be a very, um, lonely job i guess um because yeah we're working alone all the time um and even though i don't mind this at all actually it can be very uh, refreshing and inspiring to talk to other designers or other creative souls um face to face you know um so yeah meeting all these um fantastic um, talented women yeah it's probably the thing i enjoyed most about H H this year and i'm already looking forward to the next one yeah oh i spent oh i also spent a couple of hours with um eula from wool and twine um another fantastic talented inspiring creative soul she has the most gorgeous hand-dyed yarn um, and talks with so much passion and love about her job 
and you know she she just has so so many uh, or, or so much knowledge about um, the industry that it's yeah it was fantastic i'm already looking forward to uh, future chats with her and um, hopefully some more meetings in person yeah um, i actually bought some of her yarn which i will share in the acquisitions part later um, and I know she's having, um, I think to, on Friday, tomorrow, today's Thursday, she launched um, her new collection, the March collection, uh, which is crazy beautiful again. So um, yeah, be sure to check that out. Um, I think that's all about HH. Um, so Let's talk a bit about my designs then. Um, as mentioned already, I didn't get a lot of work done these last couple of months. Oh my god, the sun is really hard. So I'm hoping it won't mess up the video too much. Um, so yeah, I didn't get a lot of work done the last couple of months, uh, which was quite frustrating to be honest. Um, and hard because, well, this is a one woman business and if that woman is not working, nobody's working. Um, so yeah, my whole schedule for the um, spring or summer just got mixed up and yeah. I had to make some decisions and be realistic in, in what I can or cannot do. Um, but that's just the reality. So I got over it, I guess. Um, and then also social media um, can be pretty hangry, as I call it, uh, if you're not feeding new content to it. Um, well, you just get buried or you don't get noticed and if you don't get noticed as a um, yeah, knitwear designer, if people don't see your um, patterns, then you don't sell patterns. Um, so it's quite confronting to see um, how quickly this affects your sales. Um, yeah, so a hard lesson, but also the reality of things, I guess. In any case, um, I, as I said, I don't know if I will manage to release a lot of summer knits this year, um, but I've accepted it, so it is what it is, I guess. What I do plan to work on, first of all, the gray sweater. Um, I talked about this um, in my previous episode, um, and I'm happy to share that the pattern has now been tech, editor, uh, tech edited. So I will probably launch the test knit tomorrow, maybe, I hope, um, or later this week. So uh, about the test knitting, I changed the, how you say it, the test knitting process, I guess, a bit. And I already shared this on um, on Instagram. So I decided to put up an uh, application form on my website. Um, I will, my website is linked below, so um, you can check it out. There's a tab test knitting on my uh, website. So um, you can apply there to become a member of my test knitting team. Um, and this means as much as this. So with every uh, new test knit, I will send out an email to um, the entire list of people who have applied. Just so you know, I've already, this is already a list of more than 600 people, I think. So as a knitwear designer, this makes me very happy because, um, yeah, it's just nice to see that so many people are interested to, um, apply. Um, so you will receive all the info you need in that mail for the specific test need. 
at that time. Um, and if you would like to apply for that specific test need, um, you will need to reply or maybe um, it could be that I will link like a form um, in that email in which you can say that you want to um, to join the test need and then maybe um, yeah share the size again that you would like to make um, <clears throat> something like that so you will receive all the info in the email and then you have to reply to that email to say yes I would like to join um, and then I will go through all the applications um, of that test need and I will select um, the eventual or the final um, team of test knitters and I will contact those test knitters. I don't think I will contact everyone who um, who applied. I will see if I can do this efficiently. Um, I will because it's always nice, you know, to get a reaction or just um, a reply. So I'll try to do that. Oh my God, this. <laughs> um, so, like with every test need, it's not possible to work with everyone who applies. Um, that's just part of the deal, I'm afraid. Um, so, yeah, there's always the next test need, of course. And I always work um, with a mix of um, a couple of my regulars and new people, because it's always interesting um, you know, my, my regulars, they know um, the style of my writing, the style of my pattern. Um, they've gotten used to it, I guess. So it's always um, interesting to see how someone who has never made one of my patterns maybe um, reads it and shares feedback on it. So, yeah. Um, so that's it. No. If I don't find um, all the test needers I need through my own uh, emailing list, then I will share um, an open call for test needers on Instagram for the open slots, but only then. So I'm hoping that I can, I don't know, um, make this process a bit more um, efficient yeah for me because it's a lot of admin to um, to organize this and then also um, if I'm I rely on the the reach on Instagram for the test needs and then um, when you're not having the best reach at that time you your call for test needers just doesn't get noticed and you don't find people you need so I'm hoping that this way it will be I don't know, better. We'll see. We'll try it out. Um, you're always uh, welcome to share your thoughts on this, by the way. So that's a good one, maybe. Um, yeah, could be actually that I'm going to launch um, more test needs in just one email. Um, if I have more designs that need to be tested. And then you can choose if you apply for just one or two or more and just, yeah, you can see what's possible for you. Mm, something else about it. I always try to work with uh, yarn brands um, and if possible to arrange like a discount code for test needers um, for the final team, of course, um, but that isn't always possible. So I, I do my very best to arrange this, but I can't promise anything. Um, and if you want to know more about my Grace sweater, check out my previous episode. But I'm still working and that I will share that one. My beautiful bag from the Knitting Swan. Absolutely love this. This one was gifted to me. And as I shared, um, in my previous episodes already. Um, Tao was so friendly to give me a discount code, just my name, Dorothy. 
and then you can um, get a 10% discount on her knitting bags if you want to buy one yourself. And look, it's matching blue, blue. So this is the second sample of my gray sweater in the most gorgeous electric blue. I mean, look, oh, so as you can see, I'm working on the body. Oh, see that I'm not losing any stitches here. Nope. Um, and I'm uh, making this one in two up two strands of um, the pearl mohair. It's so, so beautiful. Um, so this one is different from the first version. The first version was in um, Sable from Lain du Val Godmar. Um, so completely different type of yarn, but the gauge is the same. So the idea behind the idea behind this um, sweater um, was that you could have many options for the yarn, um, creating a different style. Because this one, it's the same sweater, but it's another. I don't know another feeling maybe. So this is super um, light and airy and fluffy and delicious. Oh, I really need to finish it because it's so beautiful. So from um, the pearl mohair from Mayo um, Karn. I actually don't know how to pronounce it. Maybe I should ask her if I pronounce it correctly because I always say Mayo. I don't know. I should ask her. <laughs> um, so yeah, I can tell already that I'm going to live in this one. Oh my God. Yep, need to finish this one. Uh, Grace will be available. Always the same with the mohair. Uh, will be available in nine sizes going from extra small up to a 5XL. Um, it has a positive ease from around of about uh, 15 centimeters. And ease is something very personal, in my opinion. Um, I always prefer my, my sweaters to be um, a bit more oversized, so more ease. Um, so where I'm um, a size small, I guess, I always make a size medium because I prefer the, um, the fit. So this one and the previous one are both um, size medium. But that's for you to decide how much ease you, um, you prefer, of course. So um, yeah, I've shared this in the pattern too. So I hope to launch in about two months, I guess. I think eight weeks should be enough for the test knit. Um, so yeah, something like two months, maybe. Looking forward to it so much. Um, and I'm also planning to make one for kids. I decided on the yarn and I will show you uh, once I've received it. And then maybe a grace tea. I don't know. The thing is my timing, you know, it's all messed up. But when I see, you know, my Gabriella tea uh, last year was released pretty late in, I think, the end of September, maybe. So not the best time for like a summery knit, but still it's sold. So I don't know. We'll see. And I think I will, um, I've ordered the most gorgeous yarn also in the um, electric blue because 
this color. I don't know what it is, but <laughs> can't get enough of this color at the moment. It's so beautiful and it's actually one of my ultimate favorite colors next to lilac, but the blue, oh, it's perfect. So that's that about grace, I think. I will have some cold coffee now because it's cold again. A big surprise. Oh, not that cold. Okay. Mm. Next up, the ginger scarf. So you know, I've released the ginger shawl, which is the big one. Um, it's two, two meters and 40 centimeters, I think, in length. So yeah, a big, a big shawl. And then um, I immediately, immediately thought um, about making like a small version, version um, for the spring and maybe summer and fall. Yeah. So. Look, if this isn't cute, maybe I should, I should put it on. It's always hard to see when you're, okay, up. So cute. I have like, or you can wear it in your hair. I think would be cool too. You know, just tie a little knot. This is going to be difficult to do like this, but oh, good work, good work. So this is a size small. Um, again, I'm using Mayo, Fine Merino and Pearl Mohair. Where is it? I can't find it. Wait, I have another color. Okay, anyways. This is the poppy color, which I love. And you know, I have the um, ginger hat and the ginger neck and the ginger mittens in poppy. And now I have the tiny little ginger scarf. So the um, scarf will come in three sizes, um, small, medium, large. This one is the large one still needs to be blocked, but I can show you like this. And this one is the color um, anemone. So yes, nope, yes, perfect. So pretty. Um, so the smallest one is about 85 centimeters, I think, in length and 11 centimeters at the widest point here. And the largest size is about one meter and 40 centimeters and then the medium is in between um, and 19 centimeters wide after blocking. Um, so the increase rate is different uh, from the one that I used for the ginger shawl, but the look and feel is, of course, very similar. Um, so yeah, this is the little sister of the ginger shawl. And it's perfect scrap yarn project, actually, because <clears throat> for the smallest size, I've used um, a bit more than half a skein, like 30 grams of the fine merino and 50 grams is 175 um, meters. So 
What is that? Around 110 meters, I would say. Yeah, and for the biggest size, um, I used about, what did I say? 66 grams, and that's about two, 240 meters. So, a lot of options. Um, I will add all this information in the pattern, of course. And also this one, just a couple of hours of work. Such a quick knit. And you can make, um, yeah, one in all the colors you'd like. So good. Perfect little accessory. So I'm happy. Could be that I will launch this test knit or this call for test knitters in the same email as the Grace sweater. So if you're interested, apply to become a member of my test knitting team. Um, so that's that. I'm working on the third one, size medium. So for these two, it was all Mayo because you know I love Mayo so much. Where will I put it? I will put it here. And then um, I'm feeling the bright colors a bit. Can you tell? So, ooh. another beautiful project back from the knitting swan. I just love this one with the roses. And I use them every day because they're so good. Okay, the third one. It's just like the beginning, yeah? Oh, like this. So nice. So, um, I received, I don't know where I put them, um, two skeins of um, cashmere classic from Gepard Garn at the fair um, to try for the shawl, uh, scarf, sorry, scarf, um, in beige. But as I said, I'm feeling the vibrant, flashy, bold colors at the moment. So yesterday I went to my ooh, local um, yarn shop, Wally Wonka, because I know they have so much yarn from all the brands I like. And ooh, after, I don't know, one hour or something, I finally decided to go for this one. So um, it's the Cashmere Classic and the Kitseta. So um, Gepard is very good at matching all their colors. Like it's exceptional. So all the different qualities, you will most likely find a matching um, Kitseta because the, um, I found the cashmere classic by itself was a bit too thin um, so that's why I've added the kitseta. I think it's pretty look so a lot of colors and then I'm thinking I will make um, another sample in stash yarn like a very soft pink. This one is hand dyed yarn. Is it both from? This one for sure is hand dyed yarn from um, the Ladybug yarn. And oh, come on. Yeah. And I've already used this for. Um, a Gabriella T for my daughter and this one I'm not sure it's hand dyed yarn so mohair I think maybe from um, Julia's shop it's a local yarn shop in Antwerp 
could be, I don't know. I've had it for some time. So I will make another version. Look at all the pretty colors. So yeah, that's on the to-do list. And I'm thinking um, I will release this probably sometime. Whoop, where do I put it? Um, I don't know, one month maybe, something like that. So, yeah, that's it for the ginger scarf. Um, so I will keep you posted. And then next, the Lawrence hat. I'm still working on this design. I um, talked about it in the previous episode too. Oh, the sun is back. Um, so, I, oh my god. Yep, that's not ideal. Oh my god. Anyways, this isn't going to work, right? I will sit like this, maybe. Yeah. I've decided to um, postpone the release date because releasing a hat pattern in spring or summer isn't that smart I guess so I will release the pattern um, at the end of the summer early fall something like that um, so it's a top-down hat as I told you in the previous episode uh, just like your basic ribbed hat every day, an everyday hat, something like that. Um, it will come in four different sizes, one for kids and then small, medium, large. And I've already made like five samples. It's a fun knit, so I don't mind. Um, the first one was a gift for my brother, Lawrence, hence the name Lawrence Hat. And um, I've used, which one did I use? I think, was it the baby? I think Merino 200 from Lang Yarns and um, Lace. It was like the most beautiful blue, um, but I showed it in the previous episode. And then I've made another one for me um, using hand dyed yarn from the Mindful Creators held together with Cashmere Dreams. And then I've made these babies. So, can you see it right? Um, this one, it's um, Alegria. My God, this sun. I'm not complaining. It was raining all day and now the sun is there. Uh, this one is Alegria from um, Manos del Uruguay um, in the color. This this is one of their new colors. Tutti, no, this is pink lemonade and this is Tutti Frutti, um, which is actually a, some, the yeah summer colors, but so cute. Yep. And I'm um, still working on the details for the brim. I think I like this one better. Yeah. So I'm still working on it and I will make um, some more Lawrence hats, I guess. Um, yeah. To fine tune the last details. Oh, and this one. The pink lemonade. Look! So it's not blocked. I just received it. Um, my sample knitter, Sophie, made um, a new sample of the Gabriella T using, now oh, you can see it right, all the beautiful colors. Um, and with like the details and the details on the side mm. um, so not blocked it will 
uh, look more uh, how do you say it yeah whatever it needs to be blocked um, so she made a sample using the pink lemonade Alegria and it's so pretty so I'll share some um, photos once it's blocked on Instagram um, and this yarn was gifted by um, Manos del Uruguay they're so 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 kind um, okay wait oh and this is already available of course in my webshop and I'll ravel with the pattern it's the perfect summer knit just saying um, so the Lawrence hat I I'm planning to make at least two more samples because well I've bought some yarn to make two more samples and it is extremely gorgeous wait I'll show it um, oh. so this was on my um, when I was sick and miserable and I was doing some online window shopping which then became actual shopping okay so first up is this one it's from come on oops okay artemis maybe if i do it like this right my god yes so artemis yarns in the most beautiful copper this is copper color yeah so this quality it's called cumulus um, and it's 60 percent non-superwash merino and 40% cashmere. I mean, look, look. Oi. Mm. This is a dream. And yes, it is as soft as it sounds. So, this is actually not my color. I don't really. No, this is just not my. It doesn't suit me. How do you say that? But. It's a perfect color for my husband. So I think I will use this for a Lawrence hat for my husband. I will need to make a, a cake from this one ASAP. And then second one. So that's the called Stratos in the color Heaven. This is Heaven in a skein. So this is 48% baby Suri Alpaca. Oh my God. 40% baby Suri Alpaca, 30% Mulberry Silk and 22% non superwash Merino. This is gorgeous. And as I said, I went to um, Molly Wonka yesterday and I went, uh, I was looking for the perfect yarn to um, hold it together with. So I have two options. First option is this one. Can see them together and like this. So like a very neutral, just uh, yeah, a white baby alpaca. I know this one will work perfectly. You know, it will be delicious. But then I saw this one. Ooh. Um, I didn't know know this one actually. It's Manada from Pasquali. What is this? 
mohair, 25% silk, 15% merino, 15% yak. And I think this would be so beautiful. So I'm going to try if this one works together. I don't know if it will be um, the correct gauge if I just use one strand of each. I think it will be a bit too thin maybe. I don't know. I'll have to try. We'll get back to you. But it's so, so beautiful. So yes, um, that's that. That's Artemis. I will order yarn with Artemis in the future again. That's for certain. That's for certain, for sure. Yeah, okay. Um, and then, what did I do? I've finished oh, another purse. I'm sorry for the sun, really. I hope it will turn out okay, because I don't feel like recording this one again, actually. I don't have the time. We'll see. So, um, look how cute. This is, look at the texture, if I can show it to you. So, this is the Coco purse. Look, so cute. Oh. Ah, this is from um, from the fair. Hey, hey, Mama Wolf. <laughs> um, so my Coco. I saw this Camilla lid um, on the website of Mood, and I was intrigued, and I wanted to make something with it. So here she is. Look. Um, so this one is actually designed to use with the Camilla lid specifically, yeah. Um, and then I use like this little thingies. I think they're called Kaisa, yeah. And then just like um, the basic leather strap. So I will make. Um... Oh, and the yarn is Ulia and. Teddy there again from Gepard Karen, which is, in my opinion, just like the most dreamy combination. Because you know this texture texture is just look. Yeah, I like it. So I'm gonna make a second one um, in dark colors. This one is actually inspired by um like you know the old school classic um Chanel textures, uh, maybe like a bit tweedy, or how do you say that from the, um, the little two piece suits you had for women from, from in the past? So, this is inspired by that, hence the name Coco. And yeah, I'm gonna make the dark version and We'll see where this goes. Probably write a pattern for it and then do a little test knit more soon. And I think that's all from the designing part. So, what's coming up? I plan to update um, the patterns of my René cardigan and um, sweater in the coming months. Um, I know I'm saying this for a long time already, but now I'm going to do it. So it's this one. So this is my René cardigan. It's like a textured cardigan with little um, details and on the side. Like little details also on the body, actually. Uh, so. It's like a beautiful, um, airy, fluffy, 
yeah, dream of a cardigan. Um, and it's made in three strands of mohair held together, silk mohair. Um, so yeah, I know it's a very luxurious texture um, and a very delicate one, but you could um, easily replace the mohair, I guess, with a brushed alpaca or something. I don't know. So what I plan to do is make another sample of this one. I'm gonna use this one. It's like a beautiful neutral color um, from Line Yarns, the Mohair Lux. So I will start working on it and then at the same time, I will um, make tutorials for all the used techniques in the pattern and upload them to YouTube. Uh, um, <clears throat> and I will give the patterns an update in which I will also add more sizes because I, um, I think it goes up to a 2XL now. So I'll add sizes up to a 5XL. That's the plan. So that's for the coming months. And then um, I just need to check because sorry. Um, oh, and the Gloria. So this is the Gloria, one of my many, many, many Gloria sweaters um, from the past. <laughs> But last year I made um, a Gloria slipover, which was a very spontaneous design um, that I made for uh, my godchild as a birthday gift. Um, and then it kind of disappeared to the background again. So I'm thinking I might pick up that one too in the coming months. Because, you know, my... Um, my schedule for the summer and the spring got mixed up and so now I'm thinking yeah what I'll do but I don't know we'll see so I think that's it on the designing part yeah and I will work on the Grace Junior and maybe the Grace T yeah, maybe so I think it's time for the acquisitions part. Let's do that. Okay, so first up, Mood. So um, most of this is um, bought during my no knitting phase and being sick phase. So um, Mood is one of my favorite brands for accessories as you already know, probably. And um, I, de I decided I needed a new needle case because, well, it seems we never have enough of those. Um, so yeah, I went for the Bettina look. See? So you can do like this and it has like little pockets everywhere in which you can um, put your needles and then a little pocket here. Um, so I bought this one. Um, <clears throat> I put like my needles in little <laughs> so I can organize everything nice and tidy. And my Chao Gu needles, um, because to be honest, um, the little case they come in, it's like a, a little red bag, I think. I think it's just a bit ugly. So this is ideal. I can put everything in it and then look. So nice. So yeah, I have many needle cases, but this one is I guess my new favorite. Very compact. 
happy me. I like it. So that's that. Everything I need in one case. And then I already mentioned wool and twine. Um, I bought some yarn in her previous um, shop update or yeah, the previous collection, I guess. Um, so it's her newest quality, the BFL Romney in DK, I think, yeah. So pretty um, in this beautiful, I don't know, rust caramel, I don't know. I don't remember the color, the name. Anyways, I saw it and I liked it and I bought it because I was intrigued by um, the new quality. So, yeah. And as mentioned, this is not really my color, but it is the color for my husband. So, um, I'll make something for him with this. I only have two skeins, so I... We'll see. I don't know yet what I'll make, um, but yeah. And as mentioned, she, um, Yule has a shop update or in, in the new collection will be live um, on Friday this week. And she makes um, like this beautiful preview videos on YouTube where she shows all the colorways and the different qualities. And um, yeah, I saw that earlier this week and I want some yarn but I'm not gonna do it because I've reached the limit of um, acquisitions for this month but go check it out because oh my god she has some great things for you and then uh, wool madness which is a new uh, online um, yarn shop in Belgium but she made wait. Uh, check it out. I also met her at HH by the way. Um briefly. So she's very new in the yarn shop world. Okay, so I've I saw these cute little stitch markers. Um, can you see? Oh, it's hard. Right. Like this, maybe. Yeah. She makes... Oh, no. Cute. She made these herself um, with dried flowers. They are so cute. And I saw them and I well, had an instant crush and I bought them. <laughs> and I also bought some yarn. So this one, again in the blue. <laughs> um, it's from Holst Garden. It's the Titicaca. So that's pure alpaca. 50 grams is 400 meters. Pretty soft and delicious. Don't know what I'm gonna make with it, but I've never worked um, with host, so I was intrigued and I wanted I wanted to try it. So I bought some yarn. Uh, okay, that's that. And then um, Crea Cat, also a, uh, a local yarn shop from Belgium and one of my yarn shop partners, you could say. Um, we work together. She also sells my um, patterns and um, gives workshops with my patterns, so that's nice. And she has three alpacas and she makes her own yarn. Yep. It's called Lalu Knits, and she sent me a couple of oh, wait a couple of skins to try because she actually used um, this yarn 
for uh, some of my ginger designs. She was also one of my test knitters. So um, you can check her Instagram page to see um, the effect of her own alpaca yarn and uh, combined with the ginger. So she has um, different qualities um, in natural colors and hand spun and machine spun yarn. And the hand spun yarn is made by Catherine herself. So I will have to see if you can, this is hand spun. Okay, so I'll see if you can, so you can see the difference, right? This one, that's the hand spun. Yeah, this one is hand spun. The other one is machine spun. Look at the difference. It's crazy, right? So beautiful. So, um, that's that color and she also has the black. So again, whoops, this one hand spun, this one machine spun. So intriguing. It's crazy soft, so it's very beautiful. She also has like this um, different quality. So check it out, she has different qualities ah, from her own hand spun yarn. So beautiful. And then, yeah, Artemis, I already mentioned Artemis. Um, she actually also has a separate um, business called Ivy Fiber. Yeah, Ivy Fiber, where she sells naturally dyed and ethically sourced yarn. So um, I will probably buy some yarn there at some time, but not, not now. We've reached the limit. Um, and Natasha also has um, started her own YouTube channel. Um, and I watched her first episode and absolutely loved it. So I'm looking forward to the next one already. It's always so nice to see the face behind the business and to hear them talk um, with so much passion and love for yeah, the craft and the business. Um, so I like it. Mm -hmm. And then today, <laughs> that was a surprise, um, I received some happy meal from La Mana. Um, I met a wonderful people from La Mana at the fair last weekend. And well, it took me around two seconds to fall in love with every single quality of yarn. It's really crazy. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Um, so they were so kind to send me um, a box with um, all the different qualities uh, to try. And I'm very much looking forward to swatching. I'll try to show you like this. So this is one box. Ooh. And then you have... And... This is, so this is the Shetland. So beautiful. Really want to try this one. Um, you have some nice tweed. With the very subtle tweed. I saw a sweater with this um, at the fair, it was so beautiful, but really, <laughs> I can actually show every single skein like this because, oh my god, they are so beautiful. So this is wool and alpaca, pomo, wait, oh, oh this one too, oh, yeah. gorgeous, so this is Baka. So soft and fluffy. Mm. Mm. I need to try this one. And then already from this one oh, is this cashmere and merino. 
This one is the silk one. Look how pretty together. So beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then you have, um, how is it called? Pura. You have two different. You have the normal Pura and this one. And this one is actually hand dyed. Ooh, it's matching. So, and then another one with cashmere. I think this one is actually a new one, maybe. Como cashmere. So soft. So I, well, I'm going to do some swatching, which I like, of course. Um, maybe I could use Maybe I could use it for the Gloria slipover. That's an idea. I'll have to make some swatches. I think that's all. Oh, I, no, I said what I'm wearing. This is my Gloria, <laughs> my nemesis. I will start working on the Gloria sweater too. Um, but I don't know when, when the moment is there, when the feeling is right. I will get back on that train, <laughs> I promise. So um, I will do the V-neck, but now that I'm wearing this one, I actually like it too. So who knows? With Gloria, you never know. So we'll see. Um, I think that's all for today. Yeah, the sun is back, as you can tell. Um, I will do my best to be more active here without making any promises, but I'll do my best. Um, I'll try to make more episodes. I will be making more um, tutorials anyway. Um, but making these knitting podcasts um, takes a lot of time. And it's not always easy to find I will sit like this um, to find the right moment. Just when you need a cloud, there isn't a cloud, you know? <laughs> um, yeah, so it's not always easy for me to find the, the right time or moment because, well, yeah, life. And I'm also a mother of two kids. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what's realistic, so bear with me, please. Um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope I wasn't rambling too much. Um, and yes, I was a bit out of breath sometimes, but, or how do you say that? Doesn't matter. Um, I hope to see you again in the next video. Um, and you are, of course, very welcome to subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss out on the next video. Um, if you want to become a test knitter, please apply via my website. And I think that's everything I want to say to you now. So happy knitting and bye-bye.